Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Core Set 2021 Draft Guide video. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing the 10 two-color combinations that you can draft in this set, some of the key synergies to be aware of, and how those decks are going to play out. Before I dive in, though, I do want to remind you that if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future Core Set 2021 videos, and leave a comment in the comment section down below with any questions or feedback, and also which deck you're most excited to draft. Without further ado, let's dive on in. Starting things off, we have Red-White. This is going to be your typical aggressive deck. The gold uncommon for this deck is Alpine Houndmaster. It lets you search for either a red 2-drop or a white 2-drop when it comes into play, uh, if you have those in your deck. And then uh, the deck is going to be typically a beatdown deck that prioritizes two drops very heavily. The, two of the better two drops available in red and white are Chandra's Magmut and Daybreak Charger. These are the types of cards you're going to want to have as many copies of as you can get because they'll help you have a consistent curve, beat down your opponent, and kill them before they can leverage any of their more powerful spells. Moving on to the next color combination, we have blue-black. It's on the other end of the spectrum. It's gold uncommon is Obsessive Stitcher, which lets you draw a card and discard a card and then sometimes even reanimate bigger creatures to play. This type of deck is going to use the fantastic removal available to black, like Grasp of Darkness, and combine it with blue card draw, like Reign of Revelation, and use that to overwhelm your opponents with card advantage and win late game situations. Moving on to green-white, this deck is all about counters and having creatures in play to put those counters on. Its gold uncommon is Conclave Mentor, which lets you double the number, or a lot of the time double the number of counters. It puts an extra counter on uh, to the creature, so if you're going to put one counter on, you then put two counters on. And uh, it is going to be a key enabler when you're using other cards like Basri's Acolyte from white, which lets you put counters onto two different creatures when it comes into play, and also cards like Wildwood Scourge, which gets a counter on it whenever you put a counter onto another creature. With this type of deck, you're going to want to make sure you have a lot of creatures, because you're always going to want to have a creature you can put a counter on, and you're also want, going to want to prioritize those cards that put counters on your creature while also being a reasonable threat on their own. So things like Bowser's Acolyte are quite good, because if, if you have to use this in a non-optimal situation, for example, if you have only one other creature in play, at least you're still adding pressure to the board instead of just having a useless combat trick or random buff spell in your hand. So those are going to be key cards to look for in the deck. Make sure you have a lot of creatures when you're playing a deck like this. Moving on to blue-red, this deck looks incredibly powerful in this set, and it is based around spells. A lot of the time, uh, instants and sorceries matter, but in this case, it's m mostly just non-creatures. The gold uncommon is Experimental Overload, which lets you create a big creature and also get some uh, your card back by returning an instant or sorcery to, from your graveyard to your hand and making a big creature in the process. That one does care about specifically instants and sorceries, but prowess creatures and things like Riddle Form, which becomes a 3-3 whenever you cast a non-creature spell a 3-3 flyer, no less, and also Spellgorge or Weird, which grows whenever you cast a non-creature spell, are also going to be fantastic in this type of deck, where you're prioritizing cheap things like Opt, and all, of course, the red removal spells that are uh, all at the non-creature and are all very potent. Uh, for, the yeah, for, for the most part, the red removal spells are quite good, and then blue can chip in with some cantripping and some nice card draw options to further fuel your spells matter cards. Moving on to green-black, this deck is a grindy mid-range deck, which is the name of the game for black, its gold uncommon is Twin Blade Assassins, which lets you draw an extra card on your end step if a creature died this turn. Importantly, this is not just your creatures, this is your creatures or your opponent's creatures. So in black, you can leverage the powerful removal spells just like a blue-black deck would, things like Finishing Blow, to destroy creatures that your opponents control and get that extra value from your things like Twin Blade Assassins or even your Sabertooth Mauler, which is a green card that not only grows but also untaps, so it allows it to play offense and defense if you are using removal spells or sometimes there will even be situations where you can sacrifice your own creatures for value and get those triggers from your own creatures dying or even just your creatures trading in combat. Definitely a grindy black-green mid-range deck here. Next is white-blue flying. The uncommon for this color is Watcher of Spheres. It is a 2-2 two -two flyer for two that makes your other flyers cheaper and works fantastically with a ton of the flyers in the set. This type of deck is going to want to prioritize as many flyers as it can get that are good flyers and quality cards, as well as ground creatures that are able to stall the board. Things like 2-5s, 0-5s, 1-4s, uh, those 
stats that are not great for attacking, but are great at holding off ground creatures while your Air Force chips in. Things like Avon Gaggle Master are fantastic because when it comes into play, you gain two life for each creature you control with flying, and that enables you to win the race against ground creatures that are potentially bigger than your flyers. Also, things like Tide Skimmer mean you're never going to run out of cards as long as you have enough flyers in your deck to consistently trigger it. So in the white blue flyer deck, you're going to want to have flyers, as the name would suggest, but also you want to make sure you have ways to not lose races to the bigger ground decks that your opponents are going to be fielding. Next up we have Red Green. This is the exact type of big ground deck that can sometimes give Flyers a run for its money because it just prioritizes big creatures that have power 4 or greater. Sometimes you'll get extra synergies. The gold uncommon from this color combo is Leafkin Avenger, which uh, is a big creature on its own, a 4-mana four 4-3 four, that can then add mana to it for each creature you control with power 4 or greater. So you can sometimes go from 4 to 6 mana, but if you have some big creatures in play already, for example a 3-mana 4-2 or a Drowsing Tyranodon that got a buff, then you can even add 2 mana with your Leafkin Avenger and use that mana to use its second ability to deal damage equal to Leafkin's uh, Avengers power to a player. So that's quite nice as a way to get some extra reach in your deck. Another card that rewards you for having four powered creatures is Drowsing Tyranodon. It's not that hard to turn on in this set, and when you do, it becomes a two mana 3 3 that can attack your opponent on the third turn of the game, which is quite potent in the right situation. And pretty much any time you can do that, it's going to be quite powerful and put a lot of pressure on your opponent. And then other cards have more minor upside, like Turret Ogre, which is not only a four power enabler because it has four power itself, but also does a little bit of bonus damage if you have bigger creatures in play. So Red Green is going to be a beat down creature deck a lot of the time that can go a little bit bigger by playing uh, higher top end creatures like sometimes a Colossal Dreadmaw, which is a six mana, six, six trample and things like that, but also has some added synergies for having poor powered creatures. Moving on to white black, we have a life gain based deck featuring the gold uncommon indulging patrician which says at the beginning of your end step if you gained three or more life this turn each opponent loses three life uh, which is pretty powerful if you are able to consistently gain three or more life because not only are you hurting your opponent you're also putting yourself further out of their range the white common revitalize is actually going to shine in a deck like this when normally it is just a marginal card because you gain three life and you even get your card back so you are going to be able to trigger all of your life gain cards and in black you even get access to a very powerful card sanguine indulgence if you're able to ga uh, gain three or more life because you can then return two creatures from your graveyard to your hand for only one mana if you're able to have some life li gain creatures or life uh, life link creatures or creatures that gain life when they enter play things like that those are also going to feature nicely into this deck as well as cards like tavern swindler which lets you pay three life flip a coin and if you win the flip you gain six life so that'll get you a nice chunk of life to trigger your cards and you don't even have to invest mana in it all you have to do is get a little bit lucky moving on to blue green this is a very cool deck indeed it features around drawing cards which is always one of the most fun things to do in magic because it just lets you see more of your deck and create more interesting scenarios the gold uncommon for this deck is lore scale coatl which is one blue green for a 2-2 that lets you put a counter on it every time you draw a card which is going to grow rapidly as long as you pair it with card draw another very scary threat for this deck is burl fist oak which whenever you draw a card gets plus two plus two until end of turn so if you start drawing multiple cards it can easily start hitting your opponent for four six eight or even more damage if you have a great draw for your deck and finally in blue you get access to Talarian kraken at uncommon which lets you tap creatures down whenever you draw a card and if you can draw cards during your opponent's turn you can even stop them from attacking and if you are just drawing cards on your turn you are stopping them from blocking so definitely a good threat for this type of deck moving on to the i think final archetype uh, that we are going to be discussing it is black red this is going to be a grindy deck that even has some extra sacrifice synergies it's the gold uncommon is dire fleet warmonger which is three mana for a three three that at the beginning of combat lets you sacrifice another creature to give it plus two plus two that doesn't necessarily fit with the grindy elements of black red but of course black and red do have access to some of the best removal spells in the set that uh you just yeah, you just get access to some very potent spells in that way. And then you also get access to some nice grindy creatures like Death Bloom Thalid, which is one of the better things to sacrifice because when it dies, it gets another creature into play for you. So you can sacrifice two separate things. And then you get a little bit of bonus for sacrificing creatures from things like Havoc Gesture that say whenever you sacrifice a permanent, you may have it deal one damage to any target. That includes creatures and players. So you can sometimes ping things down if you have enough sacrifice going on, or you can just do the last couple points of damage to your opponent. So definitely a potent combination there.
That is going to do it for this archetype guide. I do hope you enjoyed it. Let me know which archetype you are most excited to play in the comment section down below, as well as leave a hashtag deckmaster to let me know you made it all the way till the end of the video. Remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos, leave a comment with any questions or feedback, and uh, yeah, I'm super excited for Course at 2021. I hope you are as well, and I will talk to you in my next video.